Hello everyone. Today we are going to see anatomy of rectum. Rectum is the distal part of large intestine. Here you can able to see ascending colon, transverse, descending, sigmoid and this is the portion is the rectum then the anal canal. So this is located in between the sigmoid colon above and the anal canal below. The term rectum is derived from the Latin word which is meant by straight. So in the animal the rectum is a straight tubular structure so they named it, it, it as a straight that is a rectum but in a human this is not a straight tube it is a, a kind of curved tubular structure. Even though rectum is a part of large intestine it lacks the three cordial feature which is present in the large intestine that includes circulation. This circulation is absent in the rectum okay only curvatures are present those are not the circulation. Then apart from that this appendicis epifloicus those fat laden sacs is absent in the rectum then the last is the tinea coli which is also in the rectosigmoid junction all these tinea coli disintegrate and it forms a continuous layer of long tunnel muscle throughout the rectum. So this rectum acts as a storehouse for the undigested food material. So when it is distended it gives the desire to defecate. We are going to see the rectum under the following heading. Let me start with the its location. Rectum is located in the posterior aspect of the pelvis. So try to get the orientation of this image. This is an anterior aspect where the pubic bone and the anterior abdominal wall is located. Then just behind that you will be having the urinary bladder. Then posteriorly we are having the sacral vertebra and the coccyx vertebra. So in between this the rectum is located just close to the sacral vertebra starting from S3. It is located around just extended up to the tip of coccyx that is just 2.5 centimeter in front and below the tip of the coccyx. Beyond this point, this is the anal canal. So the rectum is roughly around, the length is around 12 centimeter and the dimension starting from 4 centimeter, that is the internal diameter. It, in its lower end, it is dilated to form the rectal ampulla. Then you can able to see the peritoneal reflection. This is from the anterior part of the abdominal wall. It is reflected over the urinary bladder and it extended to the upper two third of the rectum in front. So the pouch which is present in between the urinary bladder and the rectum is known as the rectocycle pouch. So this is the location of the rectum. Moving to its extent, as I already said, it is extended from the rectosig point junction to the anal canal. So, in its course, it is not a straight, as I said already. In the human, it is beginning, it will be going backward, downward, then it will be going vertically, then again. It will be changing the direction to forward downward. Coming to the curvature, there are two types of curvature that is the antero posterior curvature, then the lateral curvatures. First, let me introduce the antero posterior curvature. So, 
here you can able to see this sling of muscle is known as puborectalis okay so which will be pulling the rectum forward close to the pubis so that uh, that is the reason the changing in the direction of the rectum so because of this antero posteriorly we can able to see two kind of curvature that is the sacral curvature so this one this first line is the sacral curvature then this is the pubic curvature so these are the two kind of curvature which is visible antero posteriorly then when we see the rectum in the coronal plane we can able to make out three lateral curvatures in out of three two will be on the right side and one will be on the left side so this is the right and left so this is the upper lateral curvature which is on the right side then middle lateral curvature on the left side then lower lateral curvature again on the right side so these are the three curvatures which is present on the lateral aspect when we see these three curvature interiorly we can able to appreciate the fold those are there are actually two kinds of folds which is present in the rectum that includes temporary and permanent folds these temporary folds are usually longitudinal and those folds will be disappearing when the rectum is getting distended but this there are some permanent folds which includes see which includes this transverse folds okay so these are the permanent folds otherwise known as hostens valve h o u t o hostens valve these are the permanent transverse fold which is located they are four in number the first fold which is located just below the recto sigmoid junction okay so this is the first transverse fold usually it will be very small rudimentary out of these four the third fold which is more prominent which is present in between the junction between the lateral that is the upper lateral and lower lateral curvature that is the one which we have seen previously the junction between upper lateral like this upper lateral and lower lateral curvature interiorly we are having the third transverse fold okay so in relation to the third transverse fold only we will we can be able to locate the remaining two transverse fold that is roughly 1 inch above and 1 inch below the third transverse fold we will be having the second and fourth transverse fold okay so these are the permanent fold which won't disappear when the rectum is distended so this will be acting like a kind of valve then coming to the relation first start with the peritoneal relation as i have said in the first diagram itself if anteriorly there is a bladder or the uterus from there the peritoneal reflection will be covering the almost the upper two third if we divide the rectum into three part okay upper one third middle one third and lower one third in the upper one third it almost cover anterior and two lateral aspect of the rectum the peritoneum will cover this is the upper one third the peritoneum will cover almost three surfaces except the posterior aspect the peritoneum will cover in the middle one third it will cover only the anterior aspect the peritoneum will cover only the anterior aspect of the rectum in the lower one third 
it is subperitoneal it is not the retroperitoneal structure it is just below the peritoneal cavity so there is no road of peritoneum close to the lower one third of the rectum when we see the anterior relation of rectum it varies from male to female in the female pelvis in the upper half of the rectum okay here the location of the rectum in the upper half of the rectum it is related anteriorly to the this is a recto uterine pouch in between the uterus and the rectum recto uterine pouch or pouch of Douglas in its lower half it is related to the posterior fornix and posterior vaginal wall in between the rectum and the vaginal wall that is the fascia of denon villus which is located in between okay here the perineal body will be there okay so this is the location of perineal body and this is the denon villa fascia which is extending up to the pouch of Douglas so this is the anterior relation in the female pelvis in the male pelvis again the upper half is same where there is a peritoneal reflection you can able to make out but here the name of the pouch is the recto vesicle pouch because it is present in between the vesicle that is the urinary bladder and the rectum recto vesicle pouch in its lower half it is related to the multiple structure which includes even the lower part of the ureter you will be having the the distal part of vas deferens seminal vesicle prostate okay and the same the fascia of the denon villus denon villus fascia which is located here okay and this is the location of the perineal body Moving to the posterior relation, which is divided into the relation in the midline and relation on the either side of the midline. In the midline, you will be having the median sacral vessel, which is a direct branch from abdominal iota, superior rectal artery, then lower three sacral vertebra. Okay, so the rectum is located roughly in between the from the third sacral vertebra so the lower third sacral vertebra will be there then ganglion impa which is the ganglion which is conducting the two sympathetic chain from the either side then finally the coccyx and the anocoxygen raphe on the either side you will be having the sympathetic chain lateral sacral vessels pyriformis anterior primary rami of s3 s4 s5 coccygeus muscle pelvic splanchnic nerves coccyx one nerve then the levator ani muscle these are the relation present in the posterior aspect this is common for both male and female moving to the blood supply the rectum is supplied by the three main arteries that is the superior rectal artery which is a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery okay so the superior rectal artery is the continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery then this is the middle rectal artery which is a branch from internal iliac artery that is especially from the anterior division of internal iliac artery so this middle rectal artery is present on the both side this superior rectal artery is the midline structure and this middle rectal artery is present on the either side then one more thing that is the inferior rectal artery which is also a paired structure which is the branch from 
internal pudendal artery apart from this this median sacral artery which is the posterior midline structure which is also uh, directly arising from the abdominal aorta which is also supplying to the rectum so i'm repeating again there are three set of arteries that is the superior rectal artery and paired structure middle rectal and inferior rectal are the paired structure and it is also contributed by the median sacral artery which is the unpaired structure from the abdominal aorta going to the venous drainage same set of veins that is the superior rectal vein middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein these veins are forming the kind of venous plexus around the anal sphincter that is the internal venous plexus and the external venous plexus close to the internal anal sphincter and external anal sphincter respectively this superior rectal vein which is draining into the inferior mesenteric vein ultimately draining into the portal vein so this is the tributaries of the portal vein and if we see the this inferior and middle rectal vein these are the tributaries of the systemic vein so this is the rectum is the one of the location important location where the porto systemic anastomosis is happening coming to the innervation this is a this is an visceral organ this is predominantly innervated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic here you should know what are the sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerve contributing to the supply of rectum lumbar sphincteric nerve okay lumbar lumbar sphincteric nerve arising from t12 l1 l2 okay that mainly supplies the sympathetic supply sympathetic supply to the rectum and the pelvic sphincteric nerve is arising from s2 s3 s4 supplies the parasympathetic supply to the rectum going the lymphatics the lymphatics is mainly divided into the upper half and the lower half in the upper half the lymph will be draining to the para rectal and to the left common iliac node in the lower half of the rectum it's predominantly drained into the internal iliac group of lymph nodes before going to the applied aspect you should understand the supports of the rectum okay which i am linking the video here see the supports of the rectum and the applied aspect in the next video thank you thank you